The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and The Tech Insider, David White. Good afternoon. It is a beautiful August. Ah, I forgot to move the date. It's August 9th, Thursday, August 9th. It is Indigenous Peoples Day. I guess that means Indians, but you can't say that anymore. Native Americans. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting stuck in my old ways, but I don't know. Janitor still a janitor. Trash uh, man is still the trash man. I don't think I'm going to change. Well, anyway, Chief, uh, Chief Dan George, uh, picture of him if you're watching Tiger TV. I always liked him. I liked him in all those Clint Eastwood movies. He was always pretty good. And uh, eh, he passed away. I forgot uh, when I looked up, but he passed away a long time ago, about uh, uh, almost uh, 25 years ago, or a little more, 27 years ago. So, but uh, eh, kind of interesting to see somebody uh, probably through his life. He probably saw a lot of changes. Uh, probably wasn't stuck in his ways as much as I am. But uh, Indigenous Peoples Day. Other than Native Americans, was there anybody else here? So why would it just be Indigenous Peoples Day? I don't know. Native American Day? I think that sounds better and more... Or, well, I wonder if they're counting uh, the Eskimos, which you can't call Eskimos Eskimos anymore. Ah, anyway, I digress. Anyway, uh, Amazon is uh, expanding its locker service. We talked a little bit about that, uh, but uh, really starting to expand it now in the San Francisco Bay Area. And this is uh, uh, pretty much a precedent uh, for what they are going to do across the country in the coming year as they've made their deals with uh, uh, the uh, tax men across the country, finally giving up uh, and uh, acquiescing to, uh, you know, basically uh, state and local officials who uh, decided to just uh, wipe their rear ends with the 1992 uh, basically legal settlement that settled the case law on this, but they didn't care. They were going to continue to uh, give everybody hell and make them pay sales tax across state lines one way or the other. Uh, but, of course, federal law says, hey, ship one across. You can't make people actually uh, get it. But uh, eventually, if you want it, it uh, doesn't matter whether it's legal or not. Uh, politicians know one thing, and that's money. Uh, DARPA has got a uh, kind of a neat thing out now. Uh, it is its terahertz electronics program. We've talked a little bit about graphene and how they've been working on transistors uh, to work at higher and higher speeds. Uh, they came out this week and showed their first uh, 0.83 terahertz uh, solid state receiver capable uh, frequencies uh, in that range. Uh, inching toward the possibilities of transistor-based electronics that will operate at, of course, more than one terahertz. Uh, to give you an idea, right now we are um, working on 10 to the ninth power uh, for frequencies, and of course that takes you to 10 to the twelfth power uh, to make it just a little easier, because I don't want to just go zero, 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 zero. But anyway, the goal is synthetic aperture radar. Uh, that will provide high resolution, full motion video from space uh, for all the NSI guys uh, to sit there and look at ground targets through clouds in the clear, through smoke, basically uh, 24 hours a day video images. Uh, without having to change too many tactics. It's called Vizar, uh, but all these high uh, frequency uh, devices are going to get more and more uh, uh, the ability to penetrate uh, both human beings for medical applications. Uh, old uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Bones from Star Trek always had his little tricorder and he could just hold it up and look in somebody's heart. Uh, that's actually not too far away. Probably in the uh, 10 to 15 ra uh, year range, um, we're probably going to see that, but they're going to be able to work at these higher frequencies. But uh, right now, this is all being driven by the NSA and their need for uh, satellites and imaging from, 
drones, uh, other things like that, uh, and they don't want someone just to put up a little smoke or have a bad, uh, bad uh, rainy day and not be able to uh, target or uh, take a look at what's going on. Uh, some of these are actually thought to be able to penetrate concrete and actually uh, up to uh, 10 feet. So uh, eventually you are going to be able to look and see through just about anything. Uh, those little uh, x-ray glasses that uh, they advertised for a dollar in the back of cartoon magazines are uh, probably not too far away. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, 10 to the 9th, 10 to the 12th uh, gives you an idea, but uh, three orders of magnitude uh, higher in speed. And, uh, you know, they've got them working in the labs right now, uh, but uh, probably just a few years away from the uh, government actually getting, uh, you know, the very expensive versions of these. Uh, much like uh, NASA drove uh, a lot of Intel's development uh, in the early days, uh, this uh, business will drive people uh, for higher and higher speed. Uh, but uh, of course, we're you know if you buy a computer today, it's probably around three gigahertz. Um, so uh, you've got 997 go to go to get to a terahertz to give you an idea just how much faster that these things are going to be going. And uh, point well, it was 0.83 or 0.87. I'll have to go back and re read the article, but getting very close to that her terahertz level. Uh, Arms Holdings has three new second uh, generation Mali chips. Um, <clears throat> and this is very important. Uh, they are uh, able to uh, up their performance levels at the same power draw by about 50%. Uh, I see that Intel is going in. Uh, as deep as they can and of course they have a significant advantage in that they can build smaller components that nobody else can. Uh, of course uh, most of the things that Arms Holdings is going to do uh, they give a reference design and then you have to go over to a fab company and actually have them build it for you. Those fab companies right now are trying to get 28 uh, nanometer technology out uh, and we've already seen that uh, uh, Intel's at 22 going to 14. Uh, the uh, Arms Holdings is going to have to have a uh, lot, a lot uh, and work with somebody uh, to get the kind of uh, manufacturing processes to compete with Intel. I suspect that Intel and Microsoft driving the tablet market and the uh, actual uh, handset market, um, I think you're going to find Intel uh, having a huge move into both those markets um, starting uh, kind of in this fall. Uh, but of course, it's just a uh, smaller die atom processor for Intel. Uh, but uh, look at next spring. I suspect you're going to see a huge amount of products coming out at uh, probably 18 uh, nanometer technology. And of course, uh, you know, you go down about every four nanometers, you're going to take off about 25% of the uh, power requirement uh, for those. Uh, so, uh, of course, that's the whole ball of wax is have long battery life when these mobile devices and high power. Uh, UBS traders are getting immunity. Uh, U.S. prosecutors have agreed to shield several former UBS AG employees from criminal charges in return for their cooperation uh, in the escalating inv uh, investigation of interest rate manipulation. Uh, if I, I stuck, got stuck in two years of a, both a, uh, a county and then a federal grand jury. And uh, if you don't know how this works, uh, prosecutors do not give immunity unless they know what the uh, person is already going to tell them and if it holds up and they have to make sure that it goes to court and they actually testify if called upon. Uh, what that tells you is that uh, they've got some dirt and it's probably extremely good on uh, some of these people above them at UBS. Uh, so uh, if you get, uh, you know, uh, if you get total immunity, which basically these guys have, uh, generally it means that uh, you're more than willing uh, to, to have done something and admit that you've done something small. 
Uh, but, uh, you know, that's generally how they get a person to flip up and up and up. Uh, but uh, look for problems, uh, big problems at UPS uh, coming your way. Uh, it was kind of interesting. I saw this chart out there this morning. Uh, it's getting talked about on talk radio today, but uh, uh, very interesting to watch uh, over the last uh, a few quarters into 2011, uh, but we're upwards of 107 million people uh, offering some form of federal welfare, and this uh, uh, does not include Social Security or Medicare. Uh, so when we look at uh, just uh, what's happening in America, uh, you can see that uh, we've had a slow and steady march up uh, and uh, how the uh, recession is, has truly hurt. Uh, but uh, there's a good 10% move between 2009 and 2011. I suspect that trajectory continues to go on. Also part of that study was that uh, the 2010 census and 2011 census data found that 43% of immigrants who have been in the United States uh, at least 20 years uh, were collecting and using welfare benefits again beyond Medicare or Social Security. Uh, that rate is uh, nearly twice as high as native-born Americans, nearly 50% higher than recent immigrants of less than 10 years. So uh, bring us your tired, and once you've been here for a while, the really tired. Uh, we're not interested in buying RIM or BlackBerry licenses. Uh, Samsung, uh, there's a lot of uh, crosstalk in very quiet markets out here that uh, basically uh, rumors are flying around. Samsung has said, hey, we have uh, not considered acquiring research and more uh, motion or licensing their new mobile operating system. Um, I've come out and said that I don't think that there's anything of any value in RIM. They've already sold almost all their patent rights going forward. If they go bankrupt, maybe there's something in their bonds. Uh, there's nothing in what they have to really speak of uh, that's worth much. Uh, if you're buying their buildings, again, uh, if you're buying their research, remember this is a Canadian company, and you'll be buying all the overhead of the Canadian government uh, that you don't have in the United States. Um, and uh, pretty tough for a lot of companies right now to say, hey, I'm going to sign up for a lot of this and you know, maybe be paying uh, three or four years of unemployment uh, after we get rid of those employees. Better off to let this company go bankrupt and uh, buy it off uh, in bankruptcy court uh, without having to take all the uh, uh, problems that uh, all the employees that these guys are going to have. Uh, but, uh, you know, even though the uh, RIM's getting rid of a lot of people, uh, they are going to have a huge overhang uh, that they're paying for the unemployment benefits in Canada for a long time. Just nothing there. Uh, probably a good idea to short this every time someone comes up with another bogus story of uh, uh, how RIM is coming back or BlackBerry license are going to get sold. Uh, there just probably isn't anything there. Uh, Pinterest for the masses. Uh, the once invite-only platform is now free for everyone and anyone to join. I actually signed mine up. Uh, we'll take a look at it when we come back. But I signed up today and made my own paid power trading hour uh, page. And if I need to uh, put something up that maybe uh, is too small, uh, needs a lot more detail, I'll be able to do that for all of my listeners. But uh, we'll look at that when we come back. And there's, ex there's my page right now. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Price Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs, these new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. 
With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesamento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain in this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Even though uh, Facebook has kind of demolished the uh, social uh, uh, stock market, um, there are some new uh, products that look like they're going to come out and probably be successful. Uh, the one everybody thinks is going to be the next big uh, uh, public IPO in uh, uh, social media is uh, a company called Pinterest. Uh, it is kind of a place that you can uh, post your images and URLs, uh, put comments in them. So it's kind of like a, uh, they kind of call it like a, a, a pin board where you can take a picture on a cork board and just kind of pin it up there with the maybe comments, some other stuff. I actually set it up. Uh, started playing with it now that I could sign up today. Uh, but it's kind of interesting if you need to charts or anything else. I put a few of them up there today. You can go to the link and just take a look at it. But uh, I'll go back to one page actually here. Uh, and there it is, Pinterest.com, Power Trading, HR instead of hour, because they have a limit on how long that could be, slash Power Trading Hour. But uh, kind of interesting. I played with it for a few minutes this morning, figure out how you do it. But you can make multiple boards with different subjects in there. I think I'll probably make one, you know, when I can't, especially with Tiger TV, I know the resolution uh, isn't as big. Sometimes you can't see all the stuff, uh, especially on really large things well enough. I'll probably be putting uh, those on Pinterest so everybody can see them and I can refer to them and make it an easy way for people to go out and see the stuff. But uh, some of the stuff we're going to be talking about here today is on it. 
Uh, Morgan Stanley is uh, firing a lot of its bond traders uh, and going to replace them with computers. After night trading, it seems uh, kind of interesting, uh, but uh, a lot of Morgan Stanley bond traders, they're thinking up to 50% of it, 50% uh, of them are going to be going bye-bye. Uh, Morgan Stanley's bond trading business has not been all that good, hadn't made a lot of money, so they're going to try to get rid of the people and hopefully the computers can do better. Uh, kind of interesting. So we're going more and more to this even with night trading. In fact, just a, a week after night trading's problems, uh, doesn't seem to have phased anybody there. Uh, Jane Wells, uh, CNBC correspondent on the West Coast, uh, had an open letter last night uh, to uh, Mr. Ellison, who owns uh, a CEO and, and biggest share, uh, a shareholder of uh, Oracle, I believe. Um, and say, please, please, please don't leave California. I know you recently bought uh, Hawaiian Island of Lanai, and I think you're eventually retiring. Don't. And there's some more stuff in there. Uh, but uh, what Jane Wells has figured out is that uh, California has 13 billionaires. If any one of those 13 billionaires left and quit paying taxes, uh, the bonds of the state would be already in big trouble. And uh, there would probably be no way if Ellison left and uh, gives you an idea that they're down to, you know, if any one of 13 people uh, left, they'd be in trouble. And if any one of the top three, uh, they would probably be uh, done for bonds. There's a state uh, uh, law that says that they will pay for uh, schools and some other stuff before they actually pay the bonds. And the school prices, uh, or what they're paying uh, to keep the schools open and teachers, all that kind of stuff, is uh, hugely high in relation to the tax base. Uh, but uh, uh, California is not that far off, so uh, I don't know if they're trying to uh, drag it out, but uh, uh, they're talking, uh, I guess the uh, uh, governor is talking about hugely increasing uh, the tax burden for those guys at the uh, uh, above million dollar a year income. And uh, some of them are talking. Uh, I think uh, Ellison has kind of talked about uh, leaving to, and going to his own island. Uh, it would be a huge blow to uh, uh, the income. And, of course, Canada or California has already spent a lot of that money they thought they were going to get from Facebook. Uh, and we're, we're kind of counting on a lot of that uh, Facebook revenue. Uh, and it uh, looks like it's going to be a whole lot less than they planned on. Uh, oh, forgot that. Uh, I, I saw this article for about five minutes before I came in. Then I tried to go back, and there was no way of getting in it. Uh, but I'll check about it on the break. And that was there was a slight increase in mortgage delinquencies this month. But I, then I tried to go back and find the article and could not. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, we've got uh, you know, about 50 seconds here. Uh, left in the day. When we come back, I'm going to start talking about stocks that are heavily shorted, and then we'll get into some of the earnings. Uh, had a pretty good one yesterday. I was talking about Monster Energy being a huge mover after hours in earnings. Uh, got a couple of them this week. Got uh, Priceline. Uh, I talked about on Monday being probably a big mover, and uh, we had... Uh, Yesterday, I talked a lot about Monster Energy being a big mover. You got about a $10 move after hours on that. Uh, we'll look and see if we can't find any other big movers for earnings tonight. Really didn't see many, but I'll check during the break to see if we have anything else. I will really want to look at uh, some of these stocks that are starting to be heavily shorted over the last couple of weeks, uh, about 15 of them. We'll be right back. Would you like a personal update from Tom O'Brien as to what equities he's trading and what his daily trading plan is before the market opens each morning? Every market day, Tom O'Brien sends out his daily newsletter, Market Insights, to hundreds of subscribers that rely on his daily recommendations when it comes to navigating these highly volatile markets we're dealing with. As recently as May 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out all five open positions for a combined profit of over 68% in one day. Profits ranged from 6.5% to over 24%, and all of these trades had been initiated within the previous 30 days. Now is the perfect time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's explosive trading newsletter, Market Insights, an $85 value. Tom breaks down the market each morning with his market take and provides trade recommendations, including precise stops and target profit zones, leaving nothing left to guessing. Log on to TFNN.com today and sign up for your two-week free trial. Make sure you're a subscriber the next time Market Insights subscribers close out multiple winning trades. Take action and sign up for your free trial today. 
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan for Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC. Member SIPC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we come back, we're going to go through some of these stocks that are being heavily shorted over the last few days and few weeks. Uh, and uh, one of the magazines, I can't remember which one, was going through... Uh, E magazines uh, basically had the top 15 stocks that uh, funds were shorting over the last week or so, uh, and eh, kind of interesting which ones seem uh, that uh, people are betting on uh, going bankrupt. Uh, we've had a little bounce out of here in American Greetings, uh, but uh, this is one of the ones that uh, people has actually uh, been shorting the uh, most out here. Uh, I don't actually like this particular short and that uh, it had came with about six cents of the previous low out here uh, on half of only almost half the volume a million to six hundred and thirty thousand shares uh, we've had a nice little bounce out of here uh, but uh, normally you want to see uh, decent volume uh, within about three days after those lows uh, so you still have a good chance of uh, getting back to that low uh, but uh, you know on a big move we did kind of uh, break out or something the market really started moving um, you know not bad, but boy, very light volume on this up move even in some of these. Uh, another one, Bridgepoint Education. In fact, all these uh, uh, 
education, uh, for-profit education uh, companies are hugely shorted. Uh, the thought is I think every one of these is going bankrupt. Uh, you probably can't even borrow shares on a lot of these. Another one that's just like that is ESI, that's ITT Educational. Probably not as bad as the rest. They actually have some of their uh, graduates actually find jobs. Um, ITT has been going sideways here for about four days. Let's see, maybe there's some headlines that I haven't heard of on this. Uh, just to look, make sure there isn't. No, nothing exciting in ITT, uh, but we're looking at all those. Uh, not on the list here uh, is one that's been short for the last year. Uh, in fact, I tried to get shares and couldn't on the last move uh, back up here to 38 bucks. Uh, but that's the Apollo Group, APOL. Another one that uh, at the level of shorts, uh, pretty much sure that these companies are going out of business. Uh, one that is the further it goes down, the harder these people are shorting it is GameStop, GME. Uh, I guess a lot of it is based on the lack of the last uh, probably three, four months of uh, decent uh, gains and uh, really hurting these stocks. But uh, uh, it doesn't look like they're actually uh, shorting any less. They're actually adding more to their shorts. Uh, and this one probably is going to have a hard time uh, in that, uh, you know, they're basically shorting down here at the bottom. Uh, they had that one uh, big day. Uh, that uh, they ran a lot of shorts on August 1st uh, with the, uh, the night uh, trading problem, but uh, it seems to me like it's problems. Uh, another one that's kind of uh, a bank shot on uh, uh, Best Buy is, uh, was it, I'm trying to think the name of the company. It's H.H. H. Griggs, uh, let me see here. Yeah, H.H. H. Gregg's. We don't have one around here, H.H. H. Gregg, I guess. Uh, but it's a, a uh, Best Buy-like company. Uh, they missed their earnings, and uh, even though they've earned their, they missed their earnings, uh, the, a lot of the fund managers are continuing to add, uh, and uh, looking at this at almost like a, uh, a uh, circuit city. Uh, my uh, engineer says there's one in the Clearwater Mall, but I don't think I've been there. That place gave me the creeps last time I was in there, so I'm not going back to it. But uh, the uh, I guess there are some around here. I've just never been in one. Uh, but uh, when you look at companies that are on this list, we're going to go through a few more. Uh, I'm going to speed uh, right on to uh, uh, Radio Shack. And even at these levels, uh, and even with the gap down, they're continuing. Uh, you as an individual investor cannot uh, short stocks generally be below $5 from your broker-dealer. But uh, uh, these hedge funds uh, don't have any problem. They're more than willing to add uh, to these uh, to uh, a Radio Shack and are betting pretty much that these guys are going full tilt broke. Uh, another one, KBH Homes, and this one actually makes sense uh, if you look at the chart. Uh, KB Homes, KBH, uh, had a huge uh, gap down day. Uh, that was on the, uh, what, March 23rd. Uh, had huge volume, 33 million shares. Uh, we've come back up with that, and what do we get here? Uh, tried to get on to it with uh, 8.5 million shares on the 10th of June. Um, looks like we're back up there testing that again with 5 million shares now. Uh, not a bad setup if you did want to short it. Of course, it's $11 stock. I pretty much want to have a stock at least 30 bucks before I go and short it. Uh, just, uh, of course, we don't have as deep of pockets and can't wait out a short squeeze as long as some of these big fund managers. Uh, another one that's uh, betting on the end of a uh, company uh, and doing a... Uh, a uh, Groupon and a Zynga. Uh, they are shorting the living daylights out of Pandora Media. Uh, I've talked a while, about a while on this one. I think it's dead meat, uh, mostly uh, because there's probably a better product out there. Uh, there's one that includes social media uh, to create playlists. And uh, why it's not public and we can't really invest in it yet, uh, most people think Pandora's model is broken, uh, much like the models before it uh, all have gone bankrupt over time. Uh, but uh, we're looking at this one, and uh, they're shorting it and have been over the last two weeks fairly heavily. Um, you know, maybe you'll get a bounce out of this thing, and maybe we'll get a chance. 
I just don't like shorting stocks in the $10, $11 range. But the street is giddy with these uh, stocks that uh, they think are going uh, BK. Uh, the biggest one uh, over the last uh, five, six days uh, of short interest rising has been Polypore International, PPO. Uh, these guys, I'm pretty sure if I check on it, this was a, a Kramer pump. Uh, and uh, let me see here. I'm pretty sure these are the guys that make uh, uh, gunk to shove down. Uh, uh, yeah, micros. Uh, uh, I think they make uh, junk that you shove down for fracking, but also they make uh, uh, all kinds of filter systems uh, for other things, too, to actually filter the water coming back out of uh, frack mines. But they also make... Uh, filtration for medical and everything else, but uh, this is another one that uh, uh, you know, we've had a long sideways consolidation on this thing. Uh, you might get, you know, a nice pop out of it, but one of the few out here uh, that actually has a price point that well, I wouldn't mind shorting out here. Um, this thing probably needs to take a bounce back up into the 45 range before I would take a, a shot at it, but uh, you've been under and consolidating under that huge uh, 26 million sh down, uh, share down day on January 31st. Uh, got down to $36.50, bounced up to $48.99 uh, just a few days later and has been going sideways forever. Uh, but uh, apparently uh, a lot of the guys on the street think that there's a bigger problem coming in Polypore. Uh, Proto Labs Incorporated, symbol is PRLB. Another one on the uh, ones that they've been hammering on the short side uh, and trying to get very short over the last two weeks. Uh, Proto Labs P R L B. I did not say so. Uh, let's see if there's anything else on here on their profile. But uh, now this one's kind of interesting in that uh, it's been kind of bouncing off these tops. Uh, Proto Labs uh, uh, CNC machine and injection. Uh, molded parts. It offers uh, products that are made of various engineering grade resins such as ABS, polycarbonate, nylon, uh, pro polypropylene. I suspect that the, uh, probably just uh, out of favor now with all of the 3D printer technology that's coming out. Uh, a lot of CNC machines getting awful cheap out there and if you're not doing 3D deposition type uh, printing uh, seems uh, just highly out of favor. Uh, United States, Germany, Japan, Italy, France, and Spain. Maybe just a, a play because a lot of their business is in Europe. Uh, but another one, Proto Labs, PRLB. Watch that guy out there. Uh, Rio Tinto. I was kind of surprised to see uh, this one being heavily sorted over the last uh, few days. Uh, this one actually uh, coming up uh, and a little more volume up here. Might be a little bit of a short squeeze. Uh, but uh, if these guys are right, uh, the place to be putting on shorts would somewhere be around 53 bucks. Uh, probably think that this thing's going to get up to that gap in that $53 uh, area. Uh, a lot of this is probably based on their business in China, and China slowing down that these people put a lot of shorts on. Uh, but uh, I would imagine that they're a little out of, uh, out of the range. A lot of these guys put on shorts, again, uh, in the hedge fund industry for a year or two years. The, they're, not, uh, uh, they're not waiting for these companies to uh, uh, go BK instantly or even have just a bad hair day. They're looking for, um, you know, probably 12 or 15 bucks on this uh, if they think that they're right. Um, now, what do we have down here? You know, you've got that $40.50 low. It still has not been tested from October 4th of last year. 8.4 million shares. Um, you know, you get back up into this uh, $54 range and hit that gap, find some really light volume. Uh, that may be one that you could actually play on that short side. Uh, we talked about Radio Shack. It looks like it's imploding. Uh, Sam. Uh, let's see if we get it here. I've got a little problem with my internet connection. Uh, let's see. I'm not exactly sure why it's doing it today, but it is. Let's try again. Uh, of course, uh, they make wonderful cereal malt beverages uh, for adults. Adult cereal malt beverages. Uh, I love their stuff. I'm not a big beer drinker. In fact, one fills me up. I don't know these people. I see them buy a six pack and drink it all night. I couldn't even get one. Man, probably get trouble getting one down, much less uh, an entire six pack. The things just kind of all that foam kind of fills me up. I guess I'm a non-carbureted, uh, carbureted, 
carbonated beverage kind of guy, so be a little different. But uh, this one uh, looking kind of interesting. I suspect that they've been shorting this on the uh, grain prices, uh, probably going to be up and uh, strong. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, all the stuff that they have uh, is probably baking away in fields right now. Uh, going to be hard for them, especially, I'm trying to remember how much uh, wheat that they use, but I'm pretty sure they make a lot of wheat beers. And I think a lot of people are thinking that the uh, uh, problem with corn is going to lead into wheat and uh, going to see their cost of production go up uh, dramatically. But, uh, uh, you know, you could probably, this is not a bad little level in here uh, to probably pick, uh, but I would suspect that if you could get back up into the 122 range and into that gap, uh, I'd might be uh, much uh, happier with that. But uh, yeah, you know, there's not a lot in this one, uh, but uh, again, uh, these hedge fund managers are throwing lots of money at it. Uh, super value is one that they are betting on going bankrupt in fairly fast off this last gap. Uh, the last 10 days, they've been adding a lot of shorts. Uh, SVU, uh, is that uh, the crime show? Uh, SVU is the symbol on it, super value, uh, but it uh, looks like they had some really bad news out here a couple weeks ago, and uh, everybody's betting, uh, even at these levels, they're shorting these stocks, which is kind of interesting to see uh, so many of these hedge funds uh, thinking that these companies are for sure going bankrupt. Uh, Toomey Holdings is another one that's uh, the favorite of these companies, uh, of these big hedge funds over the last couple of weeks, uh, putting on huge amounts of shorts. T-U-M-I is the uh, symbol. And let's see here, profile on it. Uh, not a bad setup. It's gotten back up to some gaps. Uh, had a huge move out here just over the last few days. Most likely, I'm going to guess that they had some decent earnings. And uh, this is kind of the uh, pattern we see out here, and that is uh, if these companies don't blow up, they've got such high short interest that they do pop fairly decently. Uh, but uh, a lot of times it's just uh, uh, not that they did so well, but uh, that... Uh, there were just probably too many shorts for the condition out here. Produces and markets, travel products, business cases, and accessories. It's travel products, compromised wheeled travel products. I assume that means luggage. As well as soft styles without wheels, such as satchels, garment bags, uh, boarding totes, and crossbody bags. Cro I wonder what a crossbody bag is. Oh, I bet that uh, that's at, uh, one of the satchel that all these men are wearing. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, that's probably a fad anyway. Anyway, uh, Toomey Holdings, uh, 96 uh, company-owned locations consisting of full-price stores located in high-end retail malls. No reason I, one reason I don't know them. Uh, probably if they made helmets for motorcycles, I'd know them. But uh, last one on this list, uh, as we look, uh, UN, uh, USNA is uh, Health Sciences. Uh, kind of interesting in that everybody's been shorting this over the last few days. Uh, doesn't look like maybe this is the best one of the bunch if they are right uh, and that they are shorting these at the highs, not at the lows. Uh, but um, symbol is USNA. It did break out uh, in a, some decent volume. Uh, Basically, 300,000 shares on the last significant high that it jumped across with uh, 341,000 shares uh, on the uh, 25th of uh, July. Uh, as we look, uh, fairly light volume, no sign of strength, some nice big candles, but not a lot of volume out here. Um, yeah, we'll be back. We'll be talking about a few other stocks out there. I'm going to go on to earnings. Um, I did look through the break. I really didn't see anything that looked like a decent play for an after-hours play tonight. Uh, but uh, we'll look through a few of them. Maybe I can find some during the break. Be back in a minute. You can't get me... Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll 
get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND-dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Time is the great equalizer of all mankind. Time doesn't care about winners or losers, who succeeds or fails. Time only cares that you played the game. Question, are you playing the money game? Is your money working as hard for you as you are for it? I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, a daily trading and investment newsletter service, and we're celebrating our one-year anniversary. In year one, we generated a 30% profit. Plus, I provided 26 hours of live coaching to my clients. My daily newsletter service is available by 8 a.m. each day and covers the stock, futures, currency, and commodity markets, along with all the current patterns that you can trade. Each newsletter is packed with education, and it's yours for as little as $3 per day. And for the next 30 days, you can try it risk-free. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and begin your journey to great wealth today. If you're waiting for a better tomorrow, remember this. Today's tomorrow will soon be yesterday, and your clock is ticking. Mastering probability. Now is your time. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. As we come back, because somebody made a comment about AOL, uh, actually shorted this one and ended up uh, taking a small loss. I forget what it was, 50 cents or a buck or something a little while back. Uh, they are uh, offering a huge payout if they actually get paid for some patents that they have uh, uh, sold and the, I guess the money is supposed to come through somewhere around December and uh, they said basically going to use it all to buy back stock. Uh, this is one of the stocks that uh, if you were on the short side uh, is a massive short covering uh, uh, squeeze and eventually this is probably going to be uh, the short of the century when this thing uh, actually tips. I don't know what price that's going to be. They've been able to eh, basically cauterize a few wounds uh, but is there anything really there? And the answer is no. They basically uh, have a lot of customers that are dying off in huge numbers. Uh, they are older folks with dial-up 
uh, and we all know how uh, less and less people are dial up and people that won't change their email address. Uh, they've been able to get their advertising dollar revenue up a little bit, uh, but their model is broken. Uh, this is one of those stocks where uh, they caught a lot of people on the wrong side of the market short, and uh, they're going to continue this squeeze for maybe even till the end of the year. Uh, but when this thing actually breaks, uh, look for this thing to be one of these things where you see uh, it drop 25% in a day, and uh, I suspect that that will be the signal that this thing is going to have its long death march uh, to the ash heap of history, unless something drastically changes. But right now, it's all of uh, all about a short squeeze and uh, getting as many people on the opposite side of the market. Uh, to cover, and uh, I guess I should be glad that I had just a small loss on AOL, uh, but uh, they were pretty much able to get it, and uh, they're going to continue the story until they drive it up, get rid of all the uh, shares that the people had uh, for manipulating it, but uh, it's all about uh, those patent royalties coming in, uh, and they can only sell them once, and then that will be it. So... Uh, I love paying for my AOL email. Ah, uh, you've got mail. Okay. Anyway, uh, I was looking through these uh, after the uh, after the bell, and there's not a lot there. Um, we had a little action in advanced auto parts. I know Steve was looking in that sector, um, but uh, didn't see a lot of movement out of it today. Uh, DeVry, of course, uh, another pay for uh, education company. I think they're after the bell, but uh, not much happening in them. Uh, Eat, uh, nice pop on them. Uh, Brinker International, but uh, looks like to me it's going to rotate back to the last high from uh, the 19th of last month. Not much in it. Uh, Cedar Fair LP, F-A-U-N is the symbol on it. Uh, again, not much happening on it. Kohl's, probably the one indicator I think that's interesting and that is, it is up against massive resistance of the last pop down. I uh, tried to get into that uh, even on a little better uh, news, but I think it missed on the bottom line. Uh, this one's already come out. I'd be watching this one uh, for a, a trip back down to probably about 45 bucks. And so maybe seven bucks down, not, uh, but it's already come out with earnings, I believe. The only one that has a possibility of really coming out with probably something that's going to change change the, uh, uh, or actually be big, uh, would be NVIDIA. NVIDIA still has not found its dance partner. Uh, if you can consider this an ABC down, it could be massive. Uh, but arms holding, slowly eating away with them, uh, AMD and their uh, uh, video uh, cards and chips. Of course, they have, uh, you know, found a home with AMD. Uh, so uh, it's just uh, tough for me to see NVIDIA going anywhere. Uh, but uh, maybe look for a surprise in this company. Uh, but uh, maybe back down to 11 bucks. It wouldn't be bad. You might see, you know, on a bad surprise out there, this thing go back down to 11.63. Just a not a lot there unless they get bought out. Anyway, we will see you Friday. That is tomorrow. Bye.